Every quarter, C Project releases financial statements to the public, and in included in it is indicators about the success of their games and their plans for the future. Often, information contained in its financials gives us understanding of what CD Projekt Red is doing and why. And as your friendly neighborhood accountant, I'm going to go through that and highlight the important bits. Well, what do I mean by important bits? Well, for instance, contained in CD Projekt's last three periodic financial statements, they tell us that CD Projekt Red wants to penetrate the Chinese market and has partnered with a distributor there called Gaia tells us why the China Joy event occurred and why new cards were showcased there, like uh, the cockatrice. Since there's a lot of other interesting pieces of information hidden in these financials, I'm going to make Reddit posts and videos highlighting those important bits for you, and this video is going to cover major events leading up to the present for Gwent. Uh, the first quarter financial results that were released in May and address some of the events that occurred right now and that are going to be occurring in the near future for Gwent. I hope you guys find this video helpful. First things first, we're going to discuss the major events leading to the Gwent we have today. Gwent wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Witcher 3, so we're going to start there. Witcher 3 became on the map of the general community's consciousness because of its positive media attention it received at conventions. To this day, C Project Red puts a large emphasis on the reception their games receive at conventions, most notably from the media. You will look at their financials for the annual and the Q3 for last year, and you'll see several times they'll mention media articles and how many people went to their convention in Brazil, stuff like that, or Gamescom in Köln, Germany. Köln. <laughs> uh, before Witcher 3, C Project was a monogamous company, one game at a time. After the success of Witcher 3, C Project found itself with a lot more capital because, of course, they made the game of the year in 2015, received like 150 rewards, so they had a lot of money. So they invested, and you can't really keep, if you already had enough capital to make Witcher 3, and now you have a lot more capital, and you can't really make a bigger game than Witcher 3, and they're going to probably do make a bigger game with Cyberpunk 27.7, uh, C Project decided that they're going to become a bigamous company. In a sense, C Project was always into big gamey. Uh, bad jokes aside, C Project Red split their development team into two groups: the Cyberpunk 2077 group, which I assume that some of them were kind of tired of making Witcher games. They've made three Witcher games, and they represented the lion's share of the development. Um, in CD Projekt Red. And then the Gwent team, which was smaller, like a third of the size of the Cyberpunk 2077 group, I heard. Well, Gwent got its big announcement at E3. Uh, though a lot of that came from people still being enamored with, with, with Witcher 3. Especially after the highly praised release of Blood and Wine a month prior. Shortly after E3, one of the co-creators of Gwent uh, in Witcher 3 left the development team, which kind of scared me. I was worried that there was some like infighting, but the leaving designer and the CD project assured fans that everything was friendly, it was good, Gwent would still be an amazing game, and I'm pretty certain that Gwent is developing quite nicely, so I think that wasn't bad, but it was still kind of scary, losing some of the creative team there. However, this connection between Gwent and Witcher 3 would be Gwent's biggest strength and its biggest weakness. It was a big strength because you had all these, you had no shortage of fans who were going to go into the closed beta and test your game. You had content creators, most notably King Blacktooth, who was one of the first and most passionate Gwent contact creators. If I wanted to see all the new cards, I'd go to his channel and see them. And then there was streamers like Swim, 
who push the boundaries of the game through creative deck building. And both of these groups kept fans who couldn't get into the beta engaged with Gwent. You need to keep the gaming community engaged if you want the game to survive uh, and have kind of like free marketing through its development phase. While the Witcher 3 connection gave us all these closed beta players and these content creators, it also meant Gwent was limited to its appeal to the greater card game market. A lot of effort was spent on CD Projekt's part to make the game a an international phenomenon. CD Projekt worked hard to get access to the Chinese market because they need, and it was hard to get in because they needed a Chinese distributor, Gaia, and the approval of the Chinese government in order to legally have Gwent in that country due to the communism. CD Projekt also localized Gwent for and set up offices in South Korea and Japan. They want Gwent to be a competitive game. That competitiveness is one of its selling features and that's how they're going to get into this greater card market. Now we're gonna discuss the Q1 results for CD Projekt Group and how they affect Gwent's development. Probably the most important event that isn't in these results but should be discussed is Life Coach defecting from Hearthstone and becoming a Gwent player. It's easy to underestimate how monumental Life Coach becoming a Gwent player is. When it happened, there were not enough beta keys available for all these players that wanted to play and Gwent was struggling to get into the general card market as an alternative to games like Hearthstone. Yes, there were a few people here and there, but Life Coach's defecting was so, was like at the perfect time in the Hearthstone community. People were really angry at Hearthstone, and it was highly publicized. Life Coach got interviewed a dozen times about becoming a Gwent player. There were several threads on the Hearthstone Reddit about this. And due to that, a lot of players wanted to get into the beta. CD Projekt Red being wise and capitalizing on this situation gave Gwent database thousands upon thousands of keys just so that they could keep up with the new inflow of people who wanted to play the game. They, they didn't want these players to forget about Gwent because they couldn't get in. They needed them then and there. And that's really important, not only because it meant they were going to get a lot of money through the players who were going to willing to spend money on kegs in the closed beta, but it was also going to grow their community and create a lot more content creators and streamers for the game. With that discussed, we can now move on to the quarter, the actual data. The first summary we're going to look at is for the entire Corporation CD Project. That includes GOG, which they own, and CD Project Red, and a few other subsidiaries that are just kind of local. I also want you to ignore the fact that it misspelled expenses here. They called expenses it's not a spelling error that word would catch, since it's still technically a word. CD Project is a small indie company. They're going to make mistakes. Now let's be serious. The big thing to take away from here is revenues up. Expenses are down. Why are expenses down? Because they have fully realized the expenses related to Witcher 3 by the 2017. It's not because they fired a bunch of people. Normally when we look at things and we say, oh, their operational expenses are down, it's because they shrunk the company. No, CD Projekt is growing. And because they're a European company, they defer expenses related to developing games until after the game is released. So. Witcher 3 was fully realized by 2017, so they don't have any expenses related to what they spent on Witcher 3 years ago. And Cyberpunk 2077 is being deferred, so we're not seeing that on their income statement. We are seeing some revenue from GOG, because GOG does sell games, but the vast majority of the revenue comes from CD Projekt Red here. Another cool thing is revenue is up. Why is this? Well, in both quarters, nothing was being released. For CD Projekt. They weren't, uh, Blood and Wine came out in quarter two and Gwent didn't reach public beta until quarter two. So you could probably attribute it to the ongoing sales of Witcher 3. One of the nice things about the Witcher franchise is that it continues to sell 
year after year after year after year. The other thing is Gwent's giving us money. So Q, uh, there was a lot of, you know, there were keg sales in quarter one that can contribute to the increase in revenue generation. Moving on, we're going to look at CD Projekt Red's financial data specifically. So not the whole corporation, just CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red is the vast majority of their revenue. It's like 75% of it. When we look at their cost of products, goods, and materials sold is much smaller than the big group, but it's also important to know that cost of, this cost is related to like making physical discs for Witcher 3. Um, in Q1, there aren't very much being done because they moved on to Blood and Wine. Blood and Wine isn't a physical disc thing. It's something you download from online. Gwent's going to have even less cost related to it because one, there is no distributor, third-party distributor, except for China, which has Gaia. You know, there's no Steam. There's no GameStop. You just go to GOG and CD Projekt Red owns GOG. And whenever GOG takes credit for some of the revenue, um, that gets all mashed out in their financial statements where it says the portion related to GOG or anything sold in Gwent. The other materials is like, there is no physical disc for Gwent, so they're not, there's no cost of materials related, except maybe for t-shirts. If we go to operating expenses, we can see that Gwent is the vast majority of their promotion stuff, so you can think of Burza and all the marketing they're doing, all the streaming they're doing, all the conventions they're going to. Remember, conventions are very important to CD Projekt Red. Um, ignore the fact that it still says expanses. The important thing here is that their operating expenses related to Gwent are less than they were for Witcher 3. Now we're going to look at the simplified balance sheet for CD Projekt. The important line I really want you guys to look at most is their expenditures on development projects. Yes, the total assets are increasing, their total liabilities and equity is increasing, both of which mean that the company is growing as a whole. The expenditures, though, is telling us, the players, that they're building games. If that number goes up, there is more game in the future for us to see. Expenditures is the category for things that hasn't been released yet. It will not be expense or appear on the income statement until it released. So the new Gwent cards, those are expenditures because we haven't gotten to use them yet. They're in the future. And that, this is the column for all the money they spent developing those cards would go. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 is a lion's share of this because nothing of Cyberpunk 2077 has been released and all of the expenditures related to it are in this column uh, that are traceable to development. As far as I understand as an accountant. <laughs> uh, I don't do IFRS very often, but I'm getting used to it because I have to... Uh, I do CD projects. I analyze CD projects financial statements a lot. The fact that it's increasing means that they're, again, they're a growing company, but they're spending more on developing games. You want CD Projekt to be spending more money on games because that means our us players are going to get more. Okay, that's the big takeaway here. With that, I think we're done looking at the financials for Q1. When Q2 releases, I'll have a lot more to say about these other categories like equity and liabilities and what they mean. But again, expenditures are probably where you're most going to be interested as a player. Now we're going to move into the Q2 period. This was released with their quarter one financials as their plans, but we're living the Q2 while well, Q2's actually ended. It ended in June. So Q2 is from April to the end of June. Public beta was the big thing that released during that period. We had the Challenger Tournament, which is this major promotion campaign supporting the public beta. Uh, they made premium versions for all the 300 cards, about 300 cards that came out during the uh, public beta. That is actually a big deal because the premium versions are an expensive development side of the game. Because you have to get these artists and you have to take a flat image and turn it into a 3D image. It's not just a three, a simple 3D image. There is like depth to these cards if you look into how they actually make premium cards. They launched on PlayStation 4. That was a big deal. Uh, they're trying to get cross-play between these things via GOG. Um, and like I said, they are 
localizing in East Asia, which is why the Japanese version is listed here as an important thing, uh, it, which is kind of weird to make J to single out Japan like that. But yeah, the future plans going into that, they're going to do a larger scale stuff with Gwent. The Chinese version has finally kind of been realized just recently. That's why the China Joy event was. That was like their release into the public beta. They got public beta like now while we've had it for a couple months. Well, there were Chinese players that kind of bootlegged their way in. But for the vast majority of, you know, like now they can legitly get into Gwent. Uh, more language versions. They're still pushing that localization. They want to be an international game. They want to be competitive. The new game modes, there's some speculation you can do there. We don't know what these new game modes will be. They haven't said anything. But they are developing them. That's the important part. Single player campaign. We know that single player campaign is coming soon. I'm assuming before the end of Q uh, Q3. So Q3 ends in September. I think that's their main goal here. Q2 was make public beta work. They did that. They're successful. Now we're in Q3. Single player campaign is a big focus to look at. Um, and the full release of the game is probably coming next after that. We're also seeing these tournaments and these gaming events. So Gamescom, gaming event. And they'll have a tournament there. Two birds, one stone. That's... So we got, we got that. Their plans are already told to us. Now we're seeing them happen. This is why it's important to look at these. Because if you look at this, you already knew that this was coming. Now, you shouldn't be surprised that Gamescom is having a tournament. That we're having more tournaments. That we're having, that the conventions are like a big deal for this. They want, C Project Red puts a lot of emphasis on these conventions. Well, that's the last of the information I wanted to cover. To summarize, we learned where Gwent came from, why Witcher 3 was so important, why the early content creators like King Blacktooth and Merchant were instrumental in keeping people engaged in the early closed beta. Then we had Life Coach, who was instrumental in bringing people outside of the Witcher fan base into the Gwent fold and making this game really popular as a contender in the card game marketplace. CD Projekt does not see itself as a small player in game development. They want to be one of the big three game developers. They say so on their own website. We looked at their financials. We learned that the company is growing. They're making more money and they're spending, they have less expenses. Now, we should expect those expenses to increase when everything releases in the future, because if you're a growing company, your expenses should grow. That's just how it kind of works. And their future plans we're realizing now. Now, the other real future plans we haven't covered, like their mobile game, we'll get to that in the next quarterly. Now, don't be too excited about uh, a mobile version if you like playing on the PC or the Xbox. Because if a mobile version comes with slower updates, generally speaking, because it's hard to update all those mobile devices and go through the iStore. They also, CD Projekt doesn't own the iStore. They own GOG, so they can distribute through that much easier. So that's something to be considered. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm Eric Stockhausen, and I, <laughs> this was my video. Like water off the back of a duck